Hey everybody, I'm Sam Webb and this is Shopify Dev Tips. Today, I wanna to show you how to implement predictive search on your Shopify theme. So let's get started. First, let me explain what predictive search is. If I go up here to the search bar and I type simple and I click enter, that's going to take me to the search page and it's gonna show me everything that matches that search with the word simple. But as a customer, if I don't know the exact name of a product and I'm trying to quickly find it with a few different words, this method of typing in a full word or some letters and submitting the form and having a page refresh is slow and cumbersome. And it might turn me away from shopping from your site altogether. Predictive search streamlines this by showing the customer a few products that match what they've already typed in before hitting enter. So what you would see here normally is I would type, I would type S-I-M-P-L-E, and then below this, you have a box show up that would show this product and any other products that match that search. Shopify has an API for this. It's called the Predictive Search API. I'll link this page in the description below, but this is the page that tells you exactly how you would reach that API endpoint and what comes back from those requests. Shopify has also built a library called Theme Predictive Search that makes it really easy to interact with this API. And we're gonna be using this library today. Let's start writing a little bit of code. Depending on your theme code, this is gonna be different for everybody. But in my theme, I have a section called header.liquid. And within that file, we find the search form right here. Right below this form, I'm gonna add a div. I gave it the class predictive search and I'm gonna give it a data attribute of predictive search. And this element serves two purposes. One, it's going to be the container that we use to position where our search results are displayed. And also through JavaScript, it's the element that we're going to inject all of our search results into. Now let's kill our terminal for a second. And I'm gonna run yarn add theme predictive search. And we can spin up our server again. Now hopping into the JavaScript, I'm gonna make a component called predictive search. And in theme, I'm going to import predictive search from dot slash components predictive search. And then I'm going to run predictive search. And we're going to have an error because we don't have anything being exported currently. And so let's say const init equals a function and export that. and that fixes our error. Now, if we look at their documentation, so let's first import predictive search, and then let's create a predictive search instance. Now, if we look back at the documentation, there are two methods we can use here. So there's dot on, and then there's dot query. And for dot on, we have two functions we wanna to pass to it. We wanna pass a success function and an error function. So basically, when somebody makes a request and it's a success, then it will run this function. And if somebody makes a request and for some reason there's an error, then it will return this function. So let's grab both of these and add them in. And let's say for uh, success, we will console log the word success. And for an error, we will console uh, log error. Let's actually console the error and pass in the actual error. And we'll pass in the JSON of a successful one. Finally, if we go back to the documentation one more time, we'll see predictive search that query, which is the function you run when you want the query to run. Uh, what will happen is we'll run this query and whatever the string is that's passed in here, that's what will be requested from Shopify. And then based on what comes back, either if it's successful or an error, one of these two functions will run. So let's grab the query and then paste that in. And let's change that to necklace. Now, if we go back to our front end and we open up the console and refresh the page, we'll see we got success and then we got a response. So we got resources uh, with the query necklace and re resources has results. Results has products three and it has all three of our products right here. 
we don't want to just run this on page load and then have it load up in the console. We want it to be more dynamic. So if we hop back into the header, we find the actual input for search. Let's add a data attribute to that data search bar. And if we hop back in here, what we need to do is first grab this element. And just as a measure for safety, I like to make sure the element exists before I run any more functions on it. And now we want to add our event listener. So in this case, we're going to add a key up event listener, which basically says on key up, fire off some function. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move this predictive search within there. Now, if we go back to the front end and we refresh the page, we'll see that it didn't run automatically. And if we start typing in here, we see we get all these successes and it's uh, the query is necklace every time, but we don't want the query to be necklace every time we want it to be whatever we type. So right now, if I type simple again, you'll see that every time I've done that, I've gotten back a query for necklace. Now, one way to do this is to pass in the event and grab the target of the event. But since there's only one search element that we're doing this on, we don't need to pass that in. We can just use the search object that we already have access to. So let's replace necklace with search dot value. Now you can see as I type necklace over on the side here, you'll see that we start off with N and any, any C, any C K, right? All the way up to necklace and it's always returning some sort of object. Now, before we go any further, I actually want to go back a bit and explain this predictive search class right here. So what we have here is a class that takes an object and it takes a few properties. First, we've got this search path, which is already stored in predictive search. And so it's being passed in right here. And then we've got resources. So the type of resource we're passing in uh, or the types would be an array of different resource types. As you can see here, we're only passing in the product type, we've got a limit. So limit is going to be how many of these items are going to be displayed. So we're only doing four and you've got some extra options. So the first one we're using here is unavailable products. So this is what will happen if products are unavailable that show up in the, in the search. And we have last here, which means they'll just show up after all the other ones. And then finally, we've got this fields array, which determines what fields are going to be looked at when it's doing a search, right? So it's going to look at the title, it's going to look at the product type, and it's going to look at the variant title to try and figure out if there are any matches for our search. So there's obviously more that you could add in here to make this more custom to your needs. And you just want to look at the documentation to figure out exactly what you can do. Now back to where we left off, we've already gotten to a point where we can type into our search bar and whatever value is within that search bar will be queried for predictive search. The last thing we need to do is display to the customer those items that come back. And so that's going to happen inside of the on function. And so here's what we need to do. We need to loop over the products. We need to create HTML elements for all those products. And then we need to append those to the DOM. Now this is a lot of code to write. So what I'm going to do is write it all out and then I'll explain it afterwards. All right. Now that the code has been written, let's take a look. So if I go up to this search bar and I type in simple, you can see how it's changing, right? So when I type the full word simple, we've got uh, just this one product, but as I delete characters again and get back to just the SI, uh, that matches all three products. And so you'll see them here. Once it's empty again, it doesn't match any of the products. So it goes away back to the code. The only file that I changed was predictive search.js. And then I added predictive search.scss just to add some styles so that it looks nice. So I'll go over the styles first. We've got the top bar, which we've given a position of relative. Now the top bar is already an element that exists. And I wanted to make the predictive search uh, show up relative to the top bar. So I had to give the top bar position relative. And then on the predictive search element, we've got a bunch of styles to make it look nice. But the primary ones that I was just referring to would be, I set it to position absolute with the left of zero and a top of 100% plus two pixels to give it a little gap. We've also got this is showing class that gets added and removed depending on the situation. So if there's an error, it'll remove this class and it'll hide it again. And then we've just got some styles for the actual product items and then the image, the H2 and the span that are inside of those. 
So back to the JavaScript, the meat and bones of this project. So starting right up top, I added this elements object and that object is just to hold elements that already exist on the site. So if you look at the set elements function, I've moved search into here for the search bar as well as predictive, which is the predictive search box. And then initialize the function that runs when the site first loads. We have set elements right here. And then we say if neither of those elements exist, then just return early. No need to run the rest of this because it just won't work. I haven't changed this predictive search object that's created from the class, so we don't really need to look much at that. The predictive that on success event handler is where a lot of the work is being done. So the first thing you'll see is I have this clear parent and if I scroll up to the top, I've got the clear parent function up here, which just loops over every single element that's within another element, and then it will delete all of those inner elements. Then we come down to the actual data. So as we saw before, success returns an object, which we named JSON. And within that object, if you go through resources and results, there will be an array called products. And so what you see here is if there are no products returned, then what we'll do is hide the predictive search box and then return out of this function. So let me show you that. If I type a bunch of random letters, so if I type SI, we'll see a few things, but if I start typing random stuff, then it will go away. And that's because there are no matches. This next chunk, we actually loop over all the products. And then we're basically running this create product element function. We're passing in each product as we loop over it. And then we're appending that product to the predictive element right here, right? So we're doing elements.append child, and then we're creating a new product element. And that's what's being appended. So if we scroll back up to the top again, we've got this function here called create product element. And this basically just takes in that product object, creates a product element, then creates image title and price elements, appends those to the product element and then returns the product element in whole. So then once all of those products are appended, we then show the predictive search box. Not much changed in error. We just wanted to hide it if there's an error. So the predictive search box will be hidden. And then finally on the key up event listener, we added this little clause that says if the search is empty, then remove the showing class. And so that's how we get this behavior of when we delete everything, it goes away. And that's how you implement predictive search on your Shopify site. There's a lot more you can do with this. I just did products, but you can also have you know, collections and articles as well. Make sure you check the description. I'm gonna add all of the documentation for this, as well as a link to this predictive search JavaScript file. So you can have a closer look at the code and see how it works. If you have any questions or wanna see any other videos, make sure you let me know down in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time.